Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Ben. There's no shortage of employment in the Star Wars galaxy, with major organizations such as the Galactic Empire, the Hutt Cartel, and various weapons manufacturers all looking for the best and brightest. And if you don't like the idea of working for someone else, you can always be a freelancer and accept jobs on a contract basis. This is The 5 Best Jobs in Star Wars Part 2. First up, we have a bounty hunter, the best example of which are Jango and Boba Fett. As a bounty hunter, you get access to lots of cool gadgets, like this more advanced version of James Bond's rocket pack. You also get this awesome ship, Slave 1, a modified Fire Spray 31 class patrol and attack craft. Jango Fett upgraded the weapon systems with powerful laser cannons, missile launchers, and seismic charges. And if you think that all looks too expensive for a private contractor who has to buy his own equipment, well, the ship, gadgets, and weapons were all tax write-offs, and the bounties you receive were high. Jabba the Hutt's bounty on Han Solo was 224,000 credits, a bounty which Jango's son Boba collected for delivering Han frozen in carbonite. But the job didn't come without its risks. Put simply, you pissed a lot of people off as a bounty hunter. Jango Fett got decapitated by Mace Windu and Boba was knocked into the Sarlacc pit when Han Solo hit a switch on his jetpack. Maybe it wasn't an improvement on James Bond's version. At least 007 could land in control. Next up, we have Leader of the First Order. As Leader of the First Order, Snoke was an incredibly wealthy kind of millionaire playboy. Actor Andy Serkis even said that he'd base the character off of Hugh Hefner. And Snoke likes to make a big impression with his gold robes, throne, and the biggest ship in Star Wars, the 60-kilometer-wide mega-class star dreadnought, the Supremacy. Perhaps the big ship was making up for the small size of something else. Anyway, you also get this team of personal bodyguards who wear red armor. And being the leader of the First Order was much less stressful than other leaders in the Star Wars universe. The Emperor had to deal with the politics of the Senate, and after he dissolved that, different opinions amongst his moffs and other military leaders. But the First Order was a military hunter, and Snoke had absolute power. He amplified this by often using a holographic image to appear huge and look down on his employees. <laughs> But it was a desirable position, and if you weren't careful, those under you would rise up and take your place. And that's what happened to Snoke. With Kylo Ren replacing him at the end of The Last Jedi, taking over command of the First Order's substantial military forces. As for qualifications, accomplishments in the dark side of the Force would definitely help you in this position. Next, we have a Scarif-based Stormtrooper. Well, being a Stormtrooper may not be the most glamorous job in the galaxy, but you could be stationed in a lot worse places. You could be ambushing rebels on the ice planet of Hoth, searching for droids on desolate desert planets such as Tatooine or Jakku, or being beaten up by deceptively friendly-looking teddy bears on the forest moon of Endor. But instead, the stormtroopers on Scarif got to enjoy a tropical paradise as they guard the Imperial Security Complex base there. It's kind of reminiscent of US and British military personnel serving on the joint military base situated on British Indian Ocean territory. Service personnel working there often refer to it as Fantasy Island. The Scarif scenes were filmed in the Maldives, another string of fantasy islands in the Indian Ocean. But if you're thinking of getting a suntan, think again. Full Stormtrooper armor must be worn at all times. Next, we have the head of the Kuat Drive Yards. This was the shipyard that built the Empire's Star Destroyers, as well as earlier vessels for the Republic. To give you an example of just how much business these guys did with the Empire, the US operates 10 Nimitz-class aircraft carriers each cost around $9 billion. Well, the Empire operates 25,000 Star Destroyers. If Star Destroyers cost the same as Nimitz-class aircraft carriers, the Kuat Drive Yards would have raked in $225 trillion US dollars from working with the Empire. Of course, they used Imperial credits, not US dollars, but you get the idea. They were raking in the cash. The head of the House of Kuat and the Drive Yards was imaginatively called the Kuat of Kuat. It was a hereditary title of CEO passed down through the family. They were the most powerful of the 10 families that controlled Kuat and even got to personally pick the senator that represented their planet. 
Even though the Kuat drive yards had built the Star Destroyer during the rise of the Empire era, the Kuat of Kuat didn't get along with Emperor Palpatine and fought to keep the drive yards an independent business. He also opposed the Death Star project, even when others among the ten ruling families were for it. Kuat eventually tried to destroy the drive yards due to his fear of losing them to the Empire. He managed to blow up about 20% of the facility, dying in the process. Lastly, we have an Imperial Moth. Moths were sector governors during the Galactic Empire. There were 20 of them and one Grand Moth, Wilhuff Tarkin. Moths in far off sectors could often govern in a pretty lax way and accept bribes which made them wealthy, like San Shield, the moth who governed Hut Space. Hut Space was technically subject to imperial law, but the moth let them get away with pretty much anything, until the Emperor spoiled the party and told him to actually enforce the law. The moth that ruled Ryloth in the Outer Rim was similar, living in luxury on Ryloth's largest moon, getting high on spice every day and attended to by scantily clad green-skinned Twi'lek women. Well guys, that is part two in our series of the five best jobs in the Star Wars universe and you may have noticed a trend there. Yes, a lot of people in those positions die. Snoke, the two bounty hunters, the Scarif stormtroopers, even one of those two moths I mentioned and the Grand Moth, Wilhuff Tarkin, all die. What can I say? There's a lot of competition for these positions. What are you going to do? Unionize? Leave your comments below guys about which is your favorite profession in the Star Wars galaxy. As always, if you're new, please subscribe, give this video a like, and if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.